Hey everybody, Steven here, and for this video I wanted to cover my genetic health risk and wellness results that I got from 23andMe. Now I did the uh, report about a year ago where I just did the ancestry side, and uh, I didn't realize when I bought the kit that it didn't come with this stuff. I should have just been a little more diligent with my research. So um, I got that kit for 50 bucks on sale, and I've been waiting because for the genetic health risk and the wellness side, it's 125 bucks if you're just gonna pay for that. So, uh, waited for a sale. They finally had one yesterday. I got it for 50 bucks. So I actually got both of them for 100 bucks total. So I'm glad I waited, but wanted to cover that with you. And they actually did an update to um, the uh, Ancestry Composition Report as well that I wanted to cover really, really quick, which I think is, is really cool with what they've done. So, um, I don't know my dad. Uh, he is uh, Middle Eastern, he's Arabic. And um, with this breakdown, it made more sense. Initially when I saw it, because it says Western Asian and uh, North African, and I was like, I, I don't know what that is. And especially since I'm 37.1% Western Asian, the cool thing now with this is when I click on that, it actually zooms in onto that area. So I was like, okay, in my mind, I was just framing it differently. And now it makes sense, because now in here, um, from what my family has said, and they didn't really know him, um, he's supposed to be uh, Afghan, um, so he's supposed to be from Afghanistan, so it makes sense now, now we're looking at this region, so that makes, like I said, more sense now that they've done these highlighted regions like this, which is really, really cool. Um, so I have that, uh, European, British, and Irish, 13.5%, uh, Iberian, 10.2%, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, Native American, it actually says 10.3%. I live here in Oklahoma, and there's a lot of tribes in this area, so I actually want to do their test to, to see if I qualify for any of the um, different uh, Native American um, things that they get. So they have uh, health care benefits, I mean loan benefits, school benefits, all this stuff. So I wanted to see if I could actually um, get the little card for that. So just wanted to show that really, really quick. Uh, broadly uh, South Asian 7.1%. So there's, like I said, an update to that, which is really, really cool. But um, going back to the reports here, so that's the ancestry stuff. I won't cover all of the different stuff they have there. Um, I did another video that I'll link for that. But the big thing here was the genetic health risk. So um, the new one that they added uh, was the BRCA1 and 2, which is for uh, variants for um, cancer risk. And uh, that's obviously a scary one when you're you're opening that up. But uh, I don't have any variants, which is awesome. Um, these genes are associated with an increased risk of a developing certain types of cancer, breast cancer, men and women, um, ovarian cancer. They can be associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer and other cancers. Now this it says here uh, it says however um, more than a thousand variants in the BRCA and one and BRCA two genes are known to increase cancer risk. So you should still ha could have a variant, it's just not included in the test. For right now, they might add that later. So, um, they have that one, uh, age-related macular de degeneration. I do have one variant for that. Um, it says, however, uh, I'm not likely at an increased risk of developing age-related uh, macular degeneration based on the genetic results. I had my eyes checked. Um, about six months ago and I have borderline 2015 vision so I mean I, I for right now at least I'm okay don't wear glasses or anything like that um, but it's essentially if you don't know what that is it's um, irreversible vision loss among older adults right now one of the cool things that it does with this though uh, is it gets gives you more information so how to use this test intended users limitation important uh, ethnicities um, and then it gives you even more information about on, on that. So lifestyle factors that are going to um, have an impact on that. So when it develops, which is person is usually in their 60s and 70s, so just a ton of really cool information. So if you haven't gotten the uh, health and well or the uh, genetic health risk and the wellness side, I definitely recommend it. So um, late onset uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, I don't have a variant for that. Uh, so and they tested uh, the E4 variant. Um, 
believe that's an E. That's a different symbol. So, uh, but more information on that. So, for the rest of these, Parkinson's disease, I don't have any variants uh, on that. Uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, I'll click on this one. Um, this can lead to lung and liver disease, so I don't have that. Uh, but like I said, you can go through here and look, and it can give you more information, especially who is more at risk um, with that, and lifestyle choices and all that can, can uh, cause that possible uh, signs and symptoms. Um, Celiac disease, I don't have any variants for that. I've also been tested before, so uh, I had an endoscope and they actually tested my body for, or my stomach for celiacs, and don't have that as well, so I didn't do that, so just more confirmation. Uh, hereditary uh, hemochromostate chromatosis. chromatosis. Uh, I always say it right in my head, and then I go to, <laughs> to actually say it, it's way off. Um, is a genetic condition characterized by absorption of too much dietary iron, which can lead to iron overload, which is going to cause damage to joints and certain organs, such as the liver, skin, heart, and pancreas. So this was a test for the two most common variants linked to the condition. I don't have any of those. And then uh, hereditary uh, thrombophilia, which is a predisposition to develop harmful blood clots. So don't have any var uh, variants on that one. Um, and these can travel from the legs to the lungs. I mean, that's scary, right? I don't want to have um, a, a stroke or, or anything like that. Uh, and then after that, and I don't want to go crazy in depth because if you guys do get this test, I want you to be able to look at a lot of that stuff yourself. But um, the, obviously the most scary one, which is our new one, is that cancer variant. Uh, but after that you have wellness, so we have alcohol flush reaction. So certain people actually have a flush reaction when they drink. Um, so they'll get red in the face and stuff like that. I don't have that. I'm not actually a drinker. So, I mean, the, the handful of times that I've, I have um, had drinks, I've never noticed that. So, um, makes sense. Uh, this on the wellness side is interesting because um, it shows you other things like sleepiness, headaches, nausea, genetic results, what it means, right? I'm, me personally, I'm GG, uh, unlikely to flush after drinking alcohol. Uh, and then it just gives you uh, where the alcohol flush variants are most common with that Eastern Asia, Southeastern Asia, Central Asia. So what other effects can cause that? So um, tons of just great information here. Caffeine consumption. Um, I should be drinking less than average from what it's saying. Uh, with this one, uh, 239 milligrams per day um, if I'm likely to drink caffeine at all. Now, I used to be caffeine sensitive, but just based off um, training and all that, my schedule, I, I mean, I do drink coffee or, or green tea or something like that. And then I, I went through a period where I was drinking a lot more um, just to make it through the day. And uh, with that, um, I mean, I was usually pushing 300, 350 milligrams. So I was actually higher up on the scale where they're saying 239, 340 being the upper limit. I was a little bit higher than that. And uh, since cut back, um, since my schedule's kind of calmed down, but... Um, with this, uh, that caffeine sensitivity has gone away. So I don't really have that anymore. Um, it goes more into that. So uh, maximum healthy amount of caffeine, 400 milligrams per day, which is three cups of coffee, eight cups of black tea. Um, and then it talks more about that, which to me, this is really, really interesting. Um, just because people would say, whoa, you had 300 milligrams of caffeine, like you're doing so much harm. Um, and there's studies showing that, that you are doing harm, and then there's stuff showing that they're not. And then this one's saying that you could have upwards of 400 milligrams and that'd still be a healthy amount. So, uh, deep sleep. I am um, likely not a deep sleeper, which I can attest to this. If anybody walks in the room and I'm asleep, like, I'll immediately wake up, even if you're super quiet. My body just senses that there's another presence and it wakes up. Which is good for those periods where my son walks in late at night because he's had a bad dream or something like that. And I can usually pick up really quick. But I've also made him start turning on the lights because there's been a couple times where he's like, I wake up because I sense him. He hasn't said anything yet. And he's just like staring at me, <laughs> which is pretty creepy because there's just a black figure like staring at you like a just shadowy figure. Um, and I told him my concern is that I'm going to wake up and I'm going to have like a, an intense dream and I'm just going to go into like attack mode or something. And I don't want to obviously harm him. Um, so uh, I don't want that to happen. So um, caffeine connection, 
And this is cool because this actually talks about interfering with adenosine. So there's a great video talking about caffeine and um, it's it's basically fitting the adenosine receptor, which is adenosine is telling you, hey, that you're sleepy. And then as you do that, um, it's, it's blocking that, but your body will produce more adenosine receptors in response to the caffeine over time, which is kind of what I ran into. So eventually you could drink caffeine and it'll make you sleepy because your body gets like that it basically knows now that if there's caffeine it needs to pump out more adenosine so um and uh this one talks about a couple different studies where it talks about that um being the case so uh good information there i have genetic weight uh your genes predispose you to weigh about average i'm six foot i weigh about a hundred uh, and 95 to 200 pounds this one saying 192 is, is the average um, with that so uh, I think that this especially now that I'm a trainer it's like that's gonna matter more I mean is it what's the muscle mass all those other factors that go into that how much body fat do you have etc lactose intolerant I'm not intolerant um, you're you oh sorry Based on your genetics, you're likely to be lactose intolerant. Um, however, not everybody with this experiences um, symptoms. So, um, I still drink, um, I don't drink milk. I'll have cheese, maybe a little bit of sour cream here and there. Usually not. I don't do cottage cheese. I usually do um, like coconut milk or almond milk ice cream if I'm going to do that. Um, but I do uh, yogurt a lot. But I do the stevia sweetened yogurt, so that's usually where I'm getting that. Um, muscle uh, composition. Um, this was pretty interesting. Um, genetic muscle competition is common. Composition for me is common in elite power athletes, which is awesome. At the same time, I've dislocated both my shoulders um, when I was younger, um, and uh, I've had multiple injuries to my back and, and all those other things um, from training and, and skateboarding when I was a kid and I didn't have a coach so um, really really cool information especially for what I do on this page so uh, talking about uh, protein consumption with this um, and uh, the, the difference between slow twitch and um, fast twitch fibers so um, fast twitch fibers for sprinters slow twitch for distance runners so awesome information there uh, saturated fat and weight um, your weight is likely to be similar on diets high or low in saturated fat with the same number of total calories um, which is interesting with that so uh, I do eat carbs I've had uh, a test where it showed what your body prefers to burn carbohydrates or fat I'm actually like a 40 60 split so 40% uh, carbohydrate, 60% um, fat, which is actually more rare because a lot of people are geared more towards one or another when we were doing all the tests and comparing them. Um, but I also lean a little bit more towards keto. I think there's just a high consumption of, of refined carbohydrates that uh, not everybody needs. So it's, it's not necessarily something that we should be having a, a ton of. Anyways, so um, shifting over more towards good fats with that. Uh, sleep movement um, and this is very true also based on your genetics you're likely to move more than average during sleep I toss and turn like crazy especially when I'm initially trying to get comfortable to sleep I, I twist a lot I gotta find that perfect position but I notice I move a lot when I sleep um, and that's hard for my wife to understand because she wants to to cuddle and all this other stuff and I was like I move too much I move too much for that like I'll be in that position for two minutes and then I gotta shift like it just gets uncomfortable so um, that is very true I usually stick to my side of the bed but I mean I'm back and forth back and forth so um, like I said this is some really really cool information and the way they package it is just awesome with all of the I like the this style of like icons that they put on here um, it just appeals visually to me a lot more, and it gets the point across. It's not a full, crazy, like, 20-page report on all of that. It, it, they, they distill it down to what's very, very important. And uh, it's, um, 
actually enjoyable to read and to look into the way they package it. So uh, I do recommend the 23andMe, whether that you're just doing the ancestry part or if you're actually going to do the genetic health risk and wellness. I think everybody's going to want that information. I know it could be scary when I was opening it up, man. I was like, ah, oh, like, I don't know, this made me so nervous with some of them. Because you're like, you don't want to find, like, hey, you have the variants that make it so that you're really likely to have Parkinson's disease. But um, um, with that knowledge, you can be a little bit more proactive with your health and making sure you're exercising and eating right and not smoking and drinking and all those other things. So really cool information. Um, I'm going to put a link so that you guys can actually um, get one of the kits as well if you haven't done it yet. And I'll link to that other video for you guys so you can watch when I did the first one and uh, covering more of my results with that. Um, I know there are a lot of other videos out there too. It's just fascinating. And you can connect with people on this. And you can find potential relatives that you might have. There's a ton of stuff with this. So um, if you guys like the video and like all this stuff, um, definitely hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all of my content, please hit the subscribe button for me. And thank you so much for watching.